read great books. Mm -hmm. Really, man? You've got this four-year period that, that has been carved out of your lives by society. They, they, it's, it's given you an identity, like a high-quality identity, and freedom at the same time. And you're not going to get that again in your life. You've got, a, you've got a respectable identity, university student, and complete freedom associated with that, or as near as you're ever going to get. And you've got these unbelievable libraries that are full of the writings of people mm -hmm. who, are, who are intelligent and articulate beyond comprehension. And you know, and and you can go there and you can learn all this. And you might think, well, why should you learn it? Um, well, you, you learn it to get a job, or you learn it to get good grades, or you learn it to get a degree. And that's all nonsense. It's nonsense. The reason that you come to university to be educated is because there is nothing more powerful than someone who is articulate and who can think and speak. It's power, and I mean power of the best sort. It's authority and influence and respectability and competence. And so you come to university to craft your highest skill, and your highest skill is to be found in articulated speech. And if you're, if you're, if you're a master at formulating your arguments, you win everything. And better than that, when you win everything, everyone around you wins too. Because to transform yourself into, let's consider, consider your transformation into something approximating the logos, it means you shine a light on the whole world. Well, there's nothing more exciting to do than that. There's nothing better you can possibly do. And to think that you're coming to university to be, you know, trained to have a job, it's like, great, that's a hell of a lot better than being unemployed and covered with Cheeto dust while you're snacking away in front of your video game in the basement. But it's not, it's not a, and I don't have anything against video games, by the way. But, it, <laughs> but it's hardly a triumphant call to, to being in the world. And that's what university should be calling forth. It's like, God, you people, you, you know, I, I know what Harvard students are like. I taught here for five years. You people are spectacular. You're spectacular. You're, 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 you're all capable of being world beaters. You transform yourself into something that's articulated and sensible and grounded in history and knowledgeable and wise, man. You can do anything you want and hopefully anything you want for good. Because if you have any sense, everything you want to do would be for the good because there's nothing more compelling or meaningful or or useful in combating the tragedy of life than to, than to struggle with all your soul on behalf of the good. And the universities have forgotten that. It's why everyone's bailing out of the humanities, and they should, the humanities are corrupt. And they're corrupt because they're not telling students this. It's so bloody obvious. It's like, learn to think, learn to speak, learn to read. It makes you a superpower, an individual superpower. You have, it, it, and I don't understand why that isn't just told to students. It's not that hard to understand, and everyone wants to hear it. It's like, really, I could do that? I could do that? It's like, yeah, really, you could do that. And the whole society around you has labored for really thousands of years to provide every single one of you with this spectacular opportunity that you have while you're undergraduates and graduate students here, man. They're just, everyone's just praying that you would come here and manifest everything that you could manifest. And that's what you should be doing instead of waving placards and complaining about how you're oppressed, for God's sake. You see these Yale students complaining about their oppression. It's just, it just leaves me aghast. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just don't understand what's happened to the universities. I can't mm -hmm. believe that you're not told when you come the first day, look, man, you are, you're here on a heroic mission. You're going to take your capacity to articulate yourself to levels that are undreamed of. You're going to come out of here unstoppable. You're going to be able to do anything you want. It's like, that's what you're here for. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're taught that, well, you know, the world's a pretty oppressive place and you're probably the bottom of the victim pile and, 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 there's, and there's, oh, there's virtually nothing you could do about it except, you know, deconstruct the patriarchy. And it's so weak deed and so pathetic that, that, that universities should be embarrassed that that's what they're peddling to students. Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed by it. You know, I've, I've gone on public record telling parents, bloody well send your boys to trade school because at least they'll learn something useful. And that's a terrible thing for someone like me to say because I do believe that, the art, that being articulated and educated in the highest possible manner is there's nothing that's better for you and for society. Mm -hmm. And why, are the, why have the universities forgotten this? Well, that's postmodern neo-Marxism for you, you know. <laughs> that, then the philosophy of intense resentment and oppression and group identity and God, it's just mm -hmm. pathetic.